Atiku Abubakar has won the People's Democratic Party presidential ticket. We'll discuss what was a day of speeches, intrigues, and horse trading. But also look at the chances of the PDP flag bearer against the top contenders from other political parties in the 2023 presidential election. And as usual, we have analysis of today's headlines for the pages of the National Dailies and Off the Press. A very good morning to you. It's a beautiful Monday morning right here from Plus TV Africa Studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. You're welcome. My name is Kofi Patel. It promises to be a very interesting conversation. We have a bumper package for you um, with interesting analysts lined up to give us their own expert opinion on the topics chosen. Let's start off with a look at uh, what's been trending uh, on social media and across the news spectrum uh, with Nigerians um, talking about and uh, sharing their views about these stories. Very interesting one, London to Lagos has been an interesting journey on Twitter and on YouTube. I've, I've personally followed uh, the journey of this Nigerian man, Kunle Adeyanju. Um, I, I stumbled upon his tweets and I got hooked onto. You know, everyone loves a story. Everyone loves a story and a good story at that. And this was a story. Uh, he set out as a member of uh, the Rotary Club right here in Nigeria, Nikoi, Lagos. He set out on a charity drive. And if you have been following the Rotary Club and activities of this organization, they have a polio campaign. And uh, he set up to raise funds for uh, this polio campaign. And his way of raising funds was to embark on an adventurous journey from London to Lagos on a motorbike from London to Lagos on a motorbike. He calls it the Eagle. You can see him when he's made his triumphant entry uh, to Nigeria. He went through Europe from London, took a ferry through the French Channel to France. From France, he made his way to Spain. From Spain, he's made, he made his way to Gibraltar, where he was able to cross over to Africa um, through the Strait of Gibraltar, and he landed in Morocco. From Morocco, he's made his way all the way to Mauritania. From Mauritania, he's made his way down to countries like um, uh, uh, Burkina Faso. Uh, he was supposed to go to uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, had issues getting into Cote d'Ivoire, had to go to Burkina Faso. From there, he went to Cote, La Cote d'Ivoire. From La Cote d'Ivoire, he went into uh, Ghana. From Ghana, he went to uh, Togo. Benin Republic, and then to Nigeria. I'm not calling all the countries in the synchronicities. I guess I've left some out. But it was a journey, 39 whole days he spent on the road. I mean, went through the desert, the Sahara Desert, you know, but through the safe parts. Uh, he had issues that are well documented, and he was lucky to have, you know, escaped and made it to Nigeria. He had issues, and uh, he had to pay his way out of certain situations and he arrived in Nigeria alive. In these times of um, terrorism and banditry, especially when you talk about banditry, we are just getting used to this in Nigeria. But in, in the Sahara Desert, for those who've been traveling, trying to make it through the Sahara Desert to go to Europe, they will tell you that banditry has been a thing that has been there for decades, if not centuries. You know, so um, he, these were the dangers that uh, this man, Kunle Adeyanju, who is the president-elect of the Rotary Club, of a Rotary Club in Ikoi, Lagos, um, he faced. And he, he has raised a good amount of money uh, in this end polio campaign. You can see him in different countries across uh, Africa. In fact, most countries he got into, when he reached there, someone from the Rotary Club was there to welcome him. And that's how he started one person. But the, the, the tweet, the journey on Twitter gained momentum to the point where not just the Rotarians were welcoming him in countries, but bikers, biker clubs were also welcoming him in countries. You know, um, it was amazing to see that not just Nigerians, but Moroccans, you know, Burkinabes, uh, you have uh, Ivorians, Ghanaians, Togolese, and they, they were keen on and keenly following this journey, and they welcomed him. And you had donations coming in. One of the things that uh, was a side attraction was Kunle's penchant for you know taking pictures with the women of Africa. You know, in most countries he went into, uh, he arrived in or he drove through, 
he took pictures with the women there. And um, Nigerians had to, you know, look at a funny side to tell him not to do too much because uh, he may not get home to Nigeria if he carries too many women. Um, and, and some of the people in the countries he visited gave him challenges. Some said, oh, eat that local food and I would, I would donate some money to you. Some said, oh, carry me. You know, I'll donate some money to you. I think it was in Cote d'Ivoire, a lady said he should allow her to sit on his lap and feed him and she'll donate some money uh, to you, to him, and to the, to the, to the uh, end polio campaign. Indeed, uh, it was quite interesting. But there was one lady from La Cote d'Ivoire, and we're still following the story because it seemed like uh, there's something going on between Kunle and that lady. Um, uh, she's from La Cote d'Ivoire. She is, I think, now in Nigeria to see him. And uh, there's a suspicion that there may be a love story there. I don't know if Kunle is married, but uh, maybe not. Let's see how that plays out. So it's been a wonderful, mind-blowing trip. Kunle had this uh, 360 um, degree uh, camera that he, he used to film himself while driving. He's a very good motorbike, motorbiker and um, also very good on social media. Was able to keep people captivated with his journey and with his storytelling on social media. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the, the CEO of Twitter had to, um, to commend Kunle for using the mobile, uh, the, mic, the, the micro-blogging site, uh, the social media app Twitter, to tell his story. You know, when he got to Ghana, where you have the Twitter offices of West Africa, um, he met to the Twitter team there. And so they brought this to his attention. He had a tweet to say, hey, great that you used uh, uh, Twitter to tell your story. Very, very interesting. And he arrived, of course, on the Seme border, which is uh, the border between Nigeria and Benin Republic, to a hero's welcome, a hero's welcome. And uh, he took uh, the 30-minute drive from Badagri on the coastal road between Lagos and Cotonou, Cotonou and it was treated to a warm reception uh, by bikers and people who followed the journey. Uh, everyone is struggling for Kunle's attention and time, and he's going to have so many interviews. We are also uh, calling on Kunle to come for an interview here. Um, he was captured by immigration officers on the Nigerian border. Quite interesting. He's given us a, a, a peek into, into countries that are around Africa. He's given us a peek into how people live in different parts of Africa. And it's quite, 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 quite interesting uh, to see. Zenab is the name of the pretty Ivorian lady um, who he met and who donated, I think, it was about $1,000, if I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, quite a substantial amount of money to the campaign. Zenab flew to Nigeria to be part of, you know, the 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 welcome party, and uh, um, it's quite interesting uh, what's going on between Zenab the Ivorian, whom he met on this trip, and Kunle. Uh, it's quite interesting. She gave a thousand dollars, which is about four hundred fifteen, of about forty, um, about four hundred fifteen thousand naira. You know, she gave that money to the campaign. Uh, so we'll be following the story. Is Kunle, uh, Kunle and Zenab, you know, in love? <laughs> we don't know. But anyway, let's, um, let's continue to follow this story and to see uh, how it unfolds. Very interesting uh, developments right there in Lagos. Let's move on. The officials, operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission were seen at the recently conducted People's Democratic Party presidential primaries um, initially, the pictures and videos, you know, uh, popped up on social media, showing them trying to gain access to the venue with their red EFCC uh, 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 vests. And um, we later saw videos of the EFCC operatives uh, searching uh, Ghana must go bags. This is what they were doing, searching Ghana must go bags, like you can see in the video in front of you, um, and the uh, insinuation uh, or the suspicion of, of not a few people is that they're trying to check if there's a vote buying uh, at that particular occasion or event. It was quite interesting to see. Um, but some people said, hey, you know what? Um, this is no way you should have checked. Um, you know, you should have, <laughs> you should have checked it before now. Some were saying, have you seen an FBI agent wearing the FBI jacket on an Adidas tr truck punt, you know, criticizing the dressing of the official there? Uh, some people said, oh, maybe this is a witch hunt by the federal government, which is uh, led by the APC these days. And someone, you know, on, on Instagram quoted, uh, was quoted saying, I hope they will go to the APC primaries as well. 
Um, so people are, are taking this with, a, with mixed feelings, but quite a number of people are not impressed by the EFCC. Some are saying, you know what, um, uh, who are we deceiving? <laughs> who are we deceiving? Um, so quite interesting to see. Um, uh, this is probably the first time that many people have seen the EFCC going to a party primary, checking Ghana must go bags. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, one wonders what they're hoping to find <laughs> at that event. All right, let's move on. And this is quite a very sad one. This is a very, very sad one. Um, a church in Port Hackett, which is my city, River State, um, had an event on Saturday. And at least 31 people are confirmed to have died at that event. It was a charity event organized by the King's Assembly. And uh, a stampede took place at that event. Let's, let's play a track. And when we come back, we'll talk some more about this. They did not share anything. The sharing is not start. So people just you know like, there are some people that have mentality that let me come first. So maybe I will be the one to enter first. Uh, what do you mean? I said maybe I could find to my small daughter. What I said come here. I said come here. I saw some people with that. They took me to hospital. Yeah, I'm looking for my rabbi. That's what I did. I went there. I went there every week. I don't see it again. It's been nice for us. Uh, this kind of thing that happened, I just look at it as a kind of a hunger that's in the country. I'm looking for my daughter. One of the uh, kids has been invited to the call. Because last, last year we came. When the crowd, when we are many here, so I cannot be able to carry three of, three of them. So I raised one up, actually here. I raised one here. But this one, the player is very tiny. And I lose this one. The other one that was pushing her because that one is 11 years old. They was pushing her. They was pushing her. So I don't know where she is. I make sure her name. Define, define. I can't. So th this is, is really sad. Um, really unfortunate. The people who went out to to uh, a program like this, organized by a church, was simply meant to help the poor uh, and needy in our society ended up losing their lives. And um, you know, one life loss is really sad, if, even if it's one person. But, you know, 31, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. The church is a king's assembly. And uh, yesterday, the church released a statement, which I'd like to read here. It says, um, uh, the king's assembly is deeply saddened by the stampede incident that happened in the early hours before the commencement of our benevolence and outreach program called Shop for Free at Polo Club in Port Hackett this Saturday, May 28, 2022. The purpose of this non-denominational event is to share uh, with the less privileged the gifts provided by our members, friends, and partners. Unfortunately, lives were lost and several people sustained varying degrees of injuries. Uh, this statement put out on their Twitter handle and Facebook page as well went on to say, our medical team have been working with medical volunteers and the military hospital in Port Hackett to provide emergency medical services to those affected in this incident. While the incident has been reported to the Nigerian police force, a church has commissioned a team of safety specialists to establish the immediate causes of the stampede to enable us to provide uh, the authorities with all required information in compliance with public safety laws. Uh, I went on to say that uh, the King's Assembly is a safety focused or rather safety conscious organization and will always take the safety of our congregation uh, very seriously. Our Shop for Free program uh, was started in 2014 as an annual benevolence outreach and our choice of a large venue, the Portacal Polo Club, uh, was to accommodate the projected attendance. Hmm. This year's turnout build up and the attendant circumstances were absolutely unanticipated. Uh, it says the crowd converged overnight, long before the security teams for the event took formation. We're reviewing a public safety protocol and advanced crowd management procedures uh, to persistently ensure that our events are safe. Uh, further details will be made available to the public, it says. Uh, but in the meantime, the church is rapidly tracing and engaging affected families while we encourage our members and friends to hold up the affected families in prayer. So put out an emergency number um, for those who would like to make inquiries. Now, I must make a full disclosure that I am a member of this church. Also, full disclosure that I have been a part of this event over the years. If I must be honest, the reason I worship in the King's Assembly is because um, uh, they are thorough when it comes to safety uh, and the welfare of their members. But it's, it's unfortunate that this happened. Uh, could the church have done better? 
Maybe. Could a church have um, planned better? Maybe. Um, but it is, it is uh, quite also important to note that uh, people arrived the venue of the church. And you have seen the entrance of the Polo Club, Port Harcourt, which is one of the largest venues uh, in Port Harcourt that has been used for concerts um, involving the likes of Whiskey, Davido, uh, Omale, and so forth. So it's quite a large venue. And um, uh, it seems from what we can gather that people arrived there the night before the event. So even before the organizers had uh, could even get themselves ready to allow people in, the stampede happened. Now, I spoke to a doctor um, who is a member of the church um, and who is also a member of the medical team. He was there overnight and he had to attend to some people, resuscitate some of those who died. And um, he told me Sikofi wasn't so, so, so pretty at all. But what he told me was a contrary to some of the uh, insinuations on social media um, that, that the event occurred at about 4.30 a.m. Um, so you look at 4.30 a.m., it's quite clear that that will be before the police who were invited, uh, maybe the military who were also invited, uh, or any other organizations, security organizations who were invited could even set up formation. Um, you know, how, how, how do we react to this? Lives are lost, they cannot be brought back, you know, and uh, it's very painful. Uh, I personally followed the church uh, service last yesterday morning now, as I said, full disclosure, I'm a member of this church. I serve in this church. I've been there since 2012. And the reason I went there was because I went to a church program and the crowd control was poor. And I walked out of that church. I never went. And I walked down the road and I saw this church. And I went in there. And that's how I, I, I became a member of this church. And uh, I, I monitored the service yesterday. And it was really low key. Uh, they usually have three services. But yesterday, it was only one service. And... There was no message. The pastor didn't preach. He just gave a speech to the members and asked them to go home uh, after that. Um, so it, it is unfortunate. And I've monitored also the reaction on social media. A lot of Nigerians are so gutted, uh, you know, and people blaming the church and saying that, you know, the church should be held accountable. Uh, but interestingly, uh, many more people are uh, sympathetic. It seems that um, the church, from what I've read, people say, people believe that they are known for orderliness and they are known for being thorough. Um, lessons need to be learned. Lessons need to be learned. Uh, churches need to take crowd control seriously. Now, I'm in a very difficult position here because I know that the church spent months painstakingly planning for this. I'm in a difficult position here because I know that the church decided to move this activity from their uh, premises to a polo club just so that they could accommodate the crowd and attend to them in a safe manner. You know, I'm in a difficult position here because uh, I've seen the reports and, you know, posts online where people said there was no medical team, there was no security team, the church used only bouncers, which is not true. Um, so it's going to be difficult for me to, to talk about these things and also, you know, have people not suspect. Now, in the past, we've had churches be very careless when handling uh, uh, the crowds, you know. We've had churches focus on just what they want to do, which is the worship or the service, and not think about the crowd. Um, so the church is saying that they have started an investigation. The police are also saying they've started an investigation to this. The governor of River State has also said that they will thoroughly investigate this. In fact, the uh, police spokesperson in River State, uh, Grace Iringa Koko, released a statement. Uh, she said that people gathered there and arrived there before uh, the event was meant to start. The event was meant to start by 9 a.m., and uh, it seems that a stampede took place before the security operatives invited could even take formation. And even before the volunteers from the church who didn't sleep there um, could arrive, 4.30 uh, a.m. is pretty early. I mean, I saw pictures and videos of, of children, uh, you know, of, of mothers, of women. Uh, it's really sad. It was sad to see. Um, the governor of River State is, 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 is interested in this. The police are interested in this. The church is also investigating this as well. Um, so let's, let's see what comes out of it. Let's see what comes out of it. May the souls of those who have died rest in peace and uh, hope that the investigation will tell what really happened. Uh, I heard from a, 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 a source who was also at the venue that the crowd was quite large, that they had to form a straight line uh, from uh, the Polo Club gate in Port Harcourt down to uh, the Genesis Market Square Junction, which is quite a distance. It's, if you were to walk that distance, you walk for maybe 
15, 20 minutes to get to that point. That's how long it was. And I do not know what happened, you know, that caused uh, the straight line to scatter, you know. We also told that um, at the time there were about a thousand people who had already made it inside, you know, you know, one by one. It's sad. And um, hopefully uh, uh, the investigation would help us get to the bottom of this. You know, families are grieving. They've lost loved ones. They never expected to die on that day. May their souls rest in peace and our, house go, our hearts go out to the families who have lost loved ones. That's uh, the much you can take on a trending segment. We will return in a matter of seconds to look at the headlines from the national dailies. Stay with us. <laughs>